As materials integrity management leader and developer of the industry standard FlareTech flared fitting, Integris is dedicated to providing you clear, concise flaring instructions. If followed precisely, you will produce secure, leak-free connections. This video will outline the proper hot flaring process. It is important to properly flare and assemble a flare tech fitting, as improper flaring and makeup could have serious consequences. Consequences could include serious damage to equipment, product, and more importantly, bodily harm. So please pay close attention to this flaring and demonstration. If there are questions on this process, do not hesitate to contact your nearest Integris representative. All right, what we're gonna do here is we'll talk about the tools that are required to go through and perform a hot flaring process. First off, we're gonna need a set of cutters, and the cutters required are for the small size tubing, for the quarter inch tubing, through half inch tubing, we will use the small snippet cutter, and that can be used like so to snip off the tube. Um, for the larger sizes up through three quarter inch, we have the guillotine style, which is simply cutting off a piece of tube like so. And then for the larger one inch, inch and a quarter sizes, what we're gonna be using is a larger pipe style cutter. So those are the cutters that are gonna be required. One of the things we don't recommend is the use of a, of a knife, such as this, or a side cutter, things like that, is it will distort the tubing on the end and create potentially a bad flare. The next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need a set of mandrels and you're gonna need the mandrel for the proper size tubing that you are flaring. Um, the mandrels run from quarter inch all the way up through the large one and one quarter inch size. And there are two different styles. These are the individual tube styles, um, more for the OEMs who are doing a lot of flaring of an of a individual size. Or we also have, for technicians and such, we've got a multi-tool which will do quarter through three quarter. You would still be required to have an individual one inch tool. So those are the mandrels. The next thing that we're gonna require is a hot air gun. And the hot air gun uh, needs to have a tip temperature of about 1200 degrees, somewhere in that range. That will allow you to, to stay with the, uh, the temperatures given in our instruction sheet. The other means of doing it is through an infrared glow ring. Um, the tools are fragile, but they can be used as well if you don't have a, an area where you can allow for the, the hot air to be uh, blowing into your fab and such. Then if we're going to be doing flare lock two, you'll need the grooving tool. Um, the grooving tool here is, is the white tool versus our older integral ferrule style tool, which is the blue. So we have to keep in mind, flare lock two is the white, the old is the blue. Now we'll talk about tube preparation. The first part of tube preparation is the tubing itself. The tubing that is ready, available to be flared is the quarter inch tubing, three eighths, half, three quarter, one, and one and one quarter. The wall thickness is 062 wall for three eighths through one inch. The quarter inch requires the 047 wall thickness, and the one and one quarter inch tubing is an 075 wall thickness. Today for this demonstration, we're going to use three quarter inch and eventually we'll go through and we'll show you how to do the quarter inch flaring as well. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to cut the end of the tube square. Um, for the three quarter inch tubing, as we talked about in the tool section, we're going to use the, the guillotine style cutter. And we want to cut that tube nice and square. The specification is 70,000 squareness. It's not something that's critical or needs to be measured. What we're trying to do is just give you a specification so that we're not getting something that is grossly exaggerated and possibly gonna cause us a, an improper flare. So again, we will cut that off to, to being nice and square. And again, that will allow us to insert the mandrel properly, come up to the tube stop, and give us a nice, clean, clean flare. All right, now that we've gone through the tube preparation, what we'll do is we'll actually go through and make the actual flare. Now the first thing you need to remember though is that you have to put the nut onto the tube prior to making the flare. If you don't do that, it will not fit over the end of the tube once the flare is made. So the nut will need to come on prior to that tube being flared. 
All right, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will begin to go through the flaring process. First thing we want to do is make sure that we've got our components ready. We've got the, the mandrel, we want to make sure we've got that, as well as our fitting. We're going to turn the, gear, the hot air gun on, and we'll let that warm up for a couple of seconds to make sure it comes up to temperature before we do that. Again, we want to make sure of the, the times that we use. If you follow the timetable, it's in the instructions. Um, we're using three quarter inch tubing. That's going to be about 25 seconds. Our gun is up to temperature now, so we're going to put the tubing over the tip of the gun, and we're going to be about half to three quarters of an inch over the heat source, and we're going to continue to turn that tubing. We're going to heat down about three quarters of an inch down the tube. We're going to keep track of our time. We're going to rotate the tubing all the way around to make sure that we're continually or, or evenly heating around that, around the tube. All right, once we're up to temperature, we're going to go ahead, remove it, and immediately insert it over the mandrel and bring it all the way up to the tube stop. This process can be sped up by using water to quench the tubing. You can simply slip it down into the water to cool it off. At that point we can go ahead and remove the mandrel and inspect the flare. What you'll see is the permanent deformation of the tube. Um, nice form. And again, we want to make sure that when we insert it, we're going to insert that tube, pushing it all the way up onto the body. There is a specification called out 80 to 150,000 scap. That's simply a reference. If you wanted to, to get an idea, it gives us about 80,000 scap. That just tells us that we have made the proper length flare. We've inserted the, the flaring mandrel all the way up to the tube stop. The flare tech connection is a hand tight connection. Um, so we're going to thread that nut, turning it on. There is a minimum torque value. The minimum torque value, again, we're doing three quarter inch tubing. That minimum torque value is 14 inch pounds. And so we're going to tighten it up by hand. It is a value that can be achieved by most people by hand, simply giving it good and tight. In the event that you're not able to reach that minimum torque value or you're restricted to access and such, it's simply the torque wrench fits over the end of the fitting and you can turn the nut. Once the fitting is properly torqued, we'll go ahead, we can bring it into service. It's ready to go. We'll also like to just show you briefly the room temperature flare tool. The room temperature flare tool would be used in a couple of cases. In some situations, it's not possible to bring a heat source into the fab or into the area in which you're doing the flare. The other reason would be we don't recommend reflaring tube that has already been exposed to chemical because of the dangers and the hazards exposed to the vapors of the chemical once it's volatilized by the heating process. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to take you through the flare lock two grooving process. Earlier we talked about tube preparation and we talked about cutting the tube square, 70 thousandths. This is where that becomes very important. This is our highest performing fitting. We want to make sure that we're paying close attention to all the details, the cutting process, the grooving process, and then actually the flaring process as well. All of those things will make for a very good connection. To do this, we're going to require the groove tool. It's the white tool again, not the blue one that we showed you in the tool section. There's a small arrow on here which points in the direction that we're going to be turning this tool. To do the grooving process, you depress the thumb rest and you insert it all the way on to the end of the tube. And we're going to turn this three to four complete revolutions. And in doing that, um, we're also going to be pushing kind of axially along the tube while we do that. There's one, there's two, there's three. And we need to depress the thumb rest and we'll pull that off. And there you'll see we've created the groove for the locking ring. This process is done prior to actually flaring the tube. All right, now that we've put the groove on the tube, the next thing we have to do is go through and do the flaring process. The flaring process is just like it is for the standard connection. The only difference is, again, is the nut and the, the groove that we have put in the tube. The nut has the locking ring inside which will lock in place over the, the end of the tube on the connection. Again, like the other, we want to make sure that we're putting the nut in place prior to making the flare. And we're going to go ahead, we'll turn on the gun, and we'll allow that to heat up for a moment or so. Once that comes up to temperature, we will go ahead and flare it. 
Okay, well, let's make sure our mandrel is present. We're going to heat this up for, again, the three quarter inch size, 25 seconds. We're going to be about half to three quarters of an inch over the top of the heater, about three quarters of an inch down the length of the tube, making certain we're, we're continually rotating that so that we get good even heat. Once we're up to temperature, we'll go ahead and we're going to immediately insert that into the mandrel. And on the flare lock tube, this is where it's very important that you bring it all the way up to the tube stop. This whole flare lock tube system is, is requires that all of the components come together um, and it all basically starts off with the tube coming up to the end of the tube stop. If you look at the diagram, you'll see where the fitting, the gripper, the grip ring, the nut and the tube will all come together to create a system to lock that tube in place. So again, we're going to hold it on there. We can quench it here, cooling that off. And then we're ready to go ahead and assemble that connection. Again, we'll insert it all the way on to the fitting and we will go ahead and tighten the nut. Again, hand tighten three quarter inch fitting. You got a minimum torque value of 14 inch pounds. And we'll go ahead and tighten that connection. That fitting now is ready to go. In this section we're going to talk about the quarter inch flaring. Because of the small diameter, quarter inch is the most challenging of the different tube sizes. The first thing we want to make sure with quarter inch tubing is that you've got the proper wall thickness of the tubing. The wall thickness for quarter inch is 047 as opposed to the 062 wall thickness of the tubing we were previously flaring. The other thing is we do recommend the use of the silicon gripper pad. The gripper pad will protect you from the heat as well as it will give you the additional purchase on the tubing to slide it over the mandrel. So we've got the nut in place. We will go ahead and make the flare. We will turn the gun on and we'll allow it to warm up for a moment or so. The quarter inch tubing, it's about a 15 second heat time. So we'll go ahead and we'll heat the tubing. Again, half to three quarters of an inch above the heat source, making sure you continually rotate the tube. Once it's up to temperature, we'll immediately insert it onto the mandrel and push it over, making sure it comes up all the way to the tube stop. All right, we'll hold it on the mandrel for 20 seconds, and then you can go ahead and cool it. If you're not quenching the tubing, we need to hold it on the mandrel for about two minutes to allow that temperature to cool down. At that point, we've got our flare and we're ready to go. Overheating is a result of keeping the tube over the heat source much longer than the recommended time. If this happens, the tube will collapse or the tube will buckle as it's inserted in over the mandrel. If this should happen, that tube will need to be cut off and reflared. We want to follow the, the recommended times in the table. We're briefly going to talk about short flares, and short flares are the result of the tubing not going all the way into the mandrel and all the way up to the tube stop. And the result of that is when you assemble the connection, the tube gap, which is normally 80 to 150 thousandths, is now you're going to see much larger than that. And the result of that is the potential for this fitting to fail, the tube blowing off or extruding out of the end of the nut. One of, the, one of the issues with the small size tubing is if the tube actually will get overheated and actually kink. 
And what we'll show here is how that will happen. One of the issues with the small size tubing is overheating or heating too far down the tube which will cause the tube to kink or collapse on the mandrel. What we'll show here is uneven heating. Uneven heating is if we get too much heat along the bottom or one side of the, of the tube while we're doing the flaring process. And the result of that is when we go to make up that connection, the tube gap is not uniform all the way around the tube. And that results in a potential leak as the flare shoulder is not defined properly all the way around the tube. One of the issues that can happen is improper cooling. Improper cooling is when the mandrel is removed from the tubing too quickly, thus allowing the tube to relax and come back to its original shape. What that creates is a situation where the tube diameter is not large enough to go over the end of the flare, making it difficult to insert. As we have mentioned at the beginning of this video and have illustrated with the troubleshooting section, Improper flaring can have serious consequences to equipment, operators, and your bottom line. If you have any questions on flaring FlareTech fittings, please contact Integris, the Materials Integrity Management Leader.